Hey guys, Steve with the Milson Perspective. This is video three of four about load carry systems that I've used at One Shepherd. So uh, you saw in part one is all about LC2 kit. If you have not watched that, go back. Like I said in part two, uh, go back and start there. Watch these in order. It'll help you understand the foundation and then the process for why I've changed throughout the years. So you saw the last video, I went with the chest rig and uh, minimal belt kit. Um, I thought I'd really found a good all round kit and I had, so I still use that. It's my go-to for lots and lots of situations. Um, however, I realized that at One Shepherd, I spend a lot of time doing dismounted patrol in the heat. Um, and that's something that my LC2 kit was a little bit better optimized for. However, um, I wanted to take the opportunity while going back to the belt kit concept to kind of investigate some new ideas uh, that were surfacing, or not necessarily surfacing, but I was uh, newly becoming aware of. I had a friend uh, come back from being deployed in Europe for a while. He had a lot of things, good things to say about um, how kind of the British concept of, of web gear uh, with a, a belt kit that looks a lot like LC2 and how they integrate their rucks and armor. And um, it, it changed a lot of, of what I understood about modern kit specifically for dismounted patrolling. So this is going back kind of a, to a more specialized kit. It's not so well-rounded or multi-purpose as the part two kit with the chest rig. Uh, but again, uh, dismounted patrolling is what we do at One Shepherd. Very seldom will you be motorized it's usually on an infill or exfill and you're in a troop transport of some sort so you've got space uh for your belt kit and all that stuff to not be super uncomfortable so um without any further ado again i will start with the equipment i carry and then go into the actual load carry system and then uh, next the next fourth and final video will cover the contents of my ruck so i hope you enjoy okay so uh as promised, here is all the equipment that's going in my modern belt kit. Um, as in several of the other videos, we'll just kind of go through this and then we'll get into looking at the kit itself and what everything looks packed up. Uh, so from left to right, top to bottom, we've got a two liter hydration bladder. That go this goes in a large GP pouch. Uh, gives me the ability to drink on the go. I also have a metal water bottle and cup. Uh, that's a one liter water bottle. Uh, that, doesn't able, that gives me a, um, a secondary way of carrying water in case the bladder breaks, I still have some water. Also, this gives me something uh, that I can use a little bit easier in camp. Uh, should we stop, I can cook in the cup and I can put drink mix in the bottle with no ill effects. None of that's going in my water uh, bladder. Uh, next up is the IFAC self-explanatory. Everything's in there. Um, have a... Uh, Change from a camo compact to camo sticks with a little mirror. Uh, this has just been a little bit more effective. The compact, uh, kind of digging your finger in those uh, waxing face paints, uh, just kind of got old. And this is uh, a little bit better of a system. It's actually from a hunting brand. Um, next up is the same uh, notebook, right in the ring with markers and all that. Compass uh, is still the same. Pace speeds are the same. They're not shown, but they're there as well. Um, primary and secondary magazines, uh, like with these other kits, uh, the amount of primary magazines flexes. Uh, secondary magazines is still two. Gloves, multi-tool, uh, map and SOI in either Ziploc bags or page protectors. Uh, snacks in the Ziploc bag. And then um, I've started carrying some Himalayan salt or other electrolyte sodium re replenishment. Um, and that's, that will actually go in the one liter bottle um, so that I am kind of continuously replenishing those throughout the day as opposed to trying to play catch up when I get back uh, from a patrol. Uh, across the bottom, I have my little e and &E pouch. Uh, if you didn't see episode or the first part of this video series, that's all pulled apart and detailed in there. Headlamp with signaling various colors. iPro 
whistle, Fortrex GPS, and spare batteries. Um, all pretty self-explanatory. Really the only thing not shown here is the uh, my fighting knife, uh, which I didn't mention, and my paste beads. All right, so now we will look at the kit itself. Okay, so here we have the kit all put together. Um, as seen before, the bottom row is my first line stuff that saves my pockets, so my E&E kit, my headlamp, iPro, whistle, GPS goes on the wrist, camel compact, and my notebook and SOI, those all stay on my person. Um, when <clears throat> the kit is not in use, all this stuff stays in this handy little mesh sack. Like so. And gets attached to the same Grimlock that my gloves are on. So even if I don't have, um, if I've just got like my instructing kit or I've been in the classroom for however many hours uh, with just like a water bottle and a notebook taking notes or uh, leading or AI in a class, I can, and we're switching straight into a lane, I can walk in, grab my helmet and this and walk, stuff the stuff sack in my pocket when it's empty and keep on going. Um, so what sometimes the students don't realize at One Shepherd is that the instructors uh, have to be just as ready to go uh, as they do. So anyways, that said, uh, we'll go around the kit starting on the right side. So Grimlock <clears throat> uh, with gloves and my pocket kit. I have a uh, Kiwi 2 plus 1 pouch for my secondary and my, quiz, my uh, quick change magazine. Two uh, Mayflower jungle pouches uh, for my magazine. So this is seven magazines. Uh, this is a, I believe, a tactical tailor fight light dump pouch. Could be wrong on that. Uh, K bars on the side of my jungle GP pouch, which is where the hydration bladder is. This isn't the best fit. Um, I'm still working on if I can find a this pouch shape two liter bladder, uh, that would be even better, but I haven't really nailed that down yet. That's probably the biggest question mark still on this kit, uh, but this is as by far the best solution I've come up with before. Initially I was using a uh, Australian, sorry, South African two liter canteen. The fit was perfect, but it's a hard sided canteen. So A, you can't just drink from it because it doesn't collapse. You gotta drink a little and let air back in. That part wasn't super bad. It was the loud sloshing noises uh, that got me. So I, I moved away from that. Also, um, oh, what's the name of the bottle? Um, Nalgene makes a two quart or two liter square bottle for lab purposes. Uh, they're actually started as a lab company and then switched to outdoor bottles. But, um, it's also hard sided. So same issue fits great. Uh, but and, and both of those, I can adapt a straw, a drinking straw of some sort too, but the hard side makes them slosh super noisy. That's a no go. Um, this is a, I believe an ATS lightweight, um, I pack it's rip away. This is a Kennedy custom pouch. It's for a 126 slash GP. So this is where I carry my radio if I'm carrying a 126, which is pretty common in One Shepherd. Also, um, this can flex to hold. I've got snacks, snacks and spare batteries in there right now. Also, this could be pressed into service for knobs or whatever else. Uh, Mayflower Jungle Canteen Pouch has the one liter bottle and cup. Also have my multi-tool and compass on the sides. Um, not sure, this is just a pistol mag pouch, and then this is a uh, Molly uh, compass pouch. Uh, Spiderland holster, that's not any different. And then uh, the belt is a JJ's, which is a British company, um, just a Molly belt. I typically use the Mayflower jungle suspenders. They're very low profile, fit great underneath a, yep, I said underneath a plate carrier. I have a little bit of uh, tube and cord routing capability, which is, I, I think it's about perfect. Um, I also like the way that it splits, and uh, so I can attach the belt multiple places. Got my paste beads on there. And 
the reason I don't have those on right now is because I've direct attached my miles kit or my miles harness. So, um, this is one of the bonuses, uh, specifically in one shepherd for using a belt kit is you can switch out your H harness, Y harness, whatever for the Molly or the miles harness itself. Uh, just don't forget to have a place to add your uh, little computer at miles that on to your belt or whatever you can put it on the shoulder harness if you don't have a space but uh i chose to have a space there if for whatever reason i need to toss another pouch on that uh, little computer will go up on the harness and and the extra pouch would go there but um so far this has been a very good second line um a lot of the times i will only need four magazines so that gives me a spare pouch again for nods or or whatever and uh this has been plenty, flex plenty flexible, and it works well with my, uh, my short back rucks. So now that we've looked at the second line, we'll go into ruck integration along with armor integration. All right, so let's talk armor and ruck integration. So the beauty of the low profile shoulder strap or shoulder harness that I typically use with this system is that it works great under a plate carrier. Um, and yes, under, not over. So the belt kit will go on first and then the armor on top of that. Um, reason for this being is it's just more comfortable. It enables the armor to come on and off easily if a uh, injury is received and it just makes for a, an overall more modular capability. Um, as you can see, the plate carrier pretty much just goes on top. There's really not a lot of fuss to it, not a lot of complication. That's really not a difficult thing to manage with a belt kit. Um, the Brits and other Commonwealth forces have been doing that for a long time. Um, the key with ruck management is that you have to have a short back ruck. And by that, I mean, it is not, the ruck is not tall enough to go all the way down to your waist where your hip belt will normally be and we've talked about how important it is to have load transfer um somehow that weight from your ruck needs to get to your to your hips right so hopefully that's not by compressing our spine because we don't have a hip belt and we're just carrying it with the backpack straps unfortunately sometimes that's the case but uh, we try to stay away from that as much as possible for lighter loads i use this um, ATS Ray 2. Uh, it's a three-day ruck. Uh, can also function as a large assault pack. Works great. Super rugged. Simple. It's just a just an egg-shaped ruck. It's rather short, so it sits right on top of all these back pouches. It sits about from here to here in this kind of uh, moon shape, convex shape. Holds it in place, and the weight gets transferred to the back of the uh, belt. Now, uh, there are some little differences I can I could make to make this little this transfer a little bit better. Um, a larger pouch here would give a better shelf um, to transfer that weight. However, the frame sheet in this ruck does a good job of kind of getting in this crack and just sitting there and holding the pack in. What this specific pack lacks is a hip belt so it's got attachment points if someone wanted to but it's really not going to be a load carrying hip belt either way um, for lighter loads i don't have a super big issue with that however with a bunch of dynamic movement my shoulders are going to be picking that up and it's it's not ideal um, what i prefer to have is a ruck with a waist belt that just rides higher um, and the ruck belt ends up being up around your belly. So typically what I use uh, when I want that is the Crossfire DG3. Um, it comes with an 18 inch frame. So for most people, most adult males uh, about six feet tall have about a 20 inch back. Um, that's measured from the prominent point on your, the back of your neck to the top of your pelvis. Um, if you didn't know how to measure your back, there's lots of tutorials on how to do that online. The, uh, 
the 20 inch frame for me is what allows me to do the long back rook, the traditional belt on the hips. The 18 inch uh, frame allows me to compress the uh, vertical arrangement of the ruck suspension so that it just sits on the pouches, but I still have a good belt to um, attach around and to prevent the ruck from jostling around so much when it's, uh, when it's loaded down. So kind of a couple different ways to manage this system. Uh, the important thing is that the ruck sits on the pouches and of course, uh, with or without a plate carrier, it, it really doesn't matter. It just um, adds a little bit of bulk. It's pretty easy to layer this system. It's not nearly as complicated to layer as the chest rig system was where you really have to tune in that pistol belt and make sure nothing's gonna be in the way so that you can get the, that waist belt in where it needs to go underneath your plate carrier and chest rig. Okay, so this has been part three or four, um, talking about my modern belt kit concept. Again, this is a, a kit that I'm currently uh, still kind of vetting out. Uh, it's, it's been in process for maybe a year now, and um, I'm really kind of still nailing down the, the minute details of how I want to run some specific things. Uh, however, I think it's a, a, an extremely good concept, and uh, it's one that a lot of uh, people that are a lot more knowledgeable than me are, uh, are really spun up on right now or, or getting spun up on uh, because of kind of new shifts in, in focus and world events. Um, that said, uh, part four is going to be the last part to this series. It's going to cover my ruck contents. Um, they really haven't changed very much from when I started with LC2 kit to now. Uh, and it, it uh, really didn't make sense to make an individual ruck video for each kit. So uh, that's all going to be kind of lumped together. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And it'll be out shortly.